exhausted by being caught first by the river flood and then by the flood of the breakwater, Pulavetare lay unconscious and sleepless for a long time like a log. After a good night's sleep, mild memories and dreams appeared. Once upon a time Durga Parmswari came near him after leaving the temple idol and taking four steps. Thiruve blossomed as she stared at him with burning eyes. I, you scoundrel! You and your clan are mine for generations. So I warn you. You keep it in your palace. That Nandini is a human female giantess. She came to destroy your clan and the Chola clan. She is waiting for the right time. And her from the palace, remove it from your heart and try again. Otherwise, you and your clan will suffer eternal disgrace. After warning like this, Devi went back and entered the idol and mixed it. The reaper woke up startled. His body was shaking. He found it a bit difficult to believe that what he saw was a dream. But he was determined that it should be so. It was a fine day. The storm had subsided. The rain had stopped. Only the sound of so winning was heard. He stood near the edge of the outer hall of the temple and looked around. The sight he saw was not encouraging. The destruction of the premises had by now become too large. About half of the river flood appeared to be rushing through the breach. There was only one flood forest in the eastern and southern directions. Only to the west was the flood raging and leaping up to a short distance next to the temple. Beyond was a forested area thick with short trees and bushes. He speculated that it must be a forest next to Tirupuram Piyam village and somewhere in the middle of that forest there must be an old school temple dedicated to the Gunga king Prithivapathi. He remembered the great war that took place a hundred years ago at the place where the school was located. He also remembered the heroic deeds done by his ancestors in helping the Chola clan in that war. Will such a large family of fruit be really harmed by this Nandini? Is there any truth in what Durga Parmswari said in his dream? Anyway, be careful now. We have to find out what is Nandini's private life. First of all, the other things that go on from here? If you reach Tirupuram Piyam village you can get some help there. If anyone else had survived the overturned boat like him, they might have been there too. But how to cross the flood to Tirupuram Bayam village? Around this temple, the broken flood flows like this. Even if a religious elephant descends, it will be beaten and pushed away? How to overcome this? It is cursed that the breaking flood is digging down around the temple. You never know when the temple will fall. Durga exists only if it is not celebrated by the power of Parmswari. But how to get out of there? If the breach goes after the flood recedes, I don't know how many days it will be. Fortunately, there is another way. Opposite the temple there was a neem tree that grew huge. It somehow survived the storm without falling. But the flood that was rushing around the temple was swirling around the neem tree and hollowing it out, so before the temple fell, the tree was sure to fall. If the tree falls, it will probably fall like a bridge to the forest area to the west. If not, the flood will wash away the tree and add it to the shoreline somewhere. As soon as the tree falls, if you climb on top of it, you can somehow escape from there. Until then, stay in this temple. By the grace of the goddess, there is still food left over for one more day of hunger. One has to wait there patiently until the tree falls, or until the flood recedes. What else to do besides that? There is no point in hurrying. Because we still have to do some great things in this world, Goddess Jaganmata has saved us from dying in the flood. Therefore, Durga Parmswari will show the way to go above, won't it? The day passed. Another night and day passed. The storm has moved towards the west, damaging wherever it goes. Duhana also left. But not only the robbers trapped in the temple of Goddess Durga were freed. Flooding of the property was seen to have subsided. But the breakup was coming bigger and bigger. The flood around the temple did not subside. The depth should be increasing. How to measure it? Or can you just think about swimming down that broken flood? Finally, at sunset that day, the huge neem tree in front of the temple also fell, as expected by the gardener. The fallen tree fortunately rested just touching the west bank of the breakwater. 
through it the reaper prepared to go beyond. Leaving at night, he was a little hesitant about how to find his way in that forest area. The hesitation did not last more than a few moments. Deciding that he had to leave at once, he approached the shrine to thank Durga Parmswari who had saved him from that fate. He fell on the altar and bowed down. At that moment he heard a sickening voice. At first it seemed that it was Durga Yaman who was speaking. Then it became clear that, no, the voice was coming from some distance outside. Sorcerer! Sorcerer! The voice called out. Then again Ravi Dasa! Ravi Dasa! cried out. It seemed like a voice I had never heard before. Palyavetarayar got up and came to the front hall. He stood in the shelter of the pillar and looked towards the place where the voice had come from. Beyond the breaking flood, he saw a figure standing near the tip of a fallen heather. Sorcerer! Sorcerer! The cry reminds him of what his brother once told him. By the grace of Goddess Durga Devi, he thought that he was going to know the mystery that he had not known till then. So he stood motionless. The figure standing on the bank watched as the breaking flood began to pass through the fallen neem tree. Pulvatarayar then did a miraculous thing that had never been done before in his vinyl. He immediately lay down in the front hall of the temple. He pretended to sleep. The desire to know about Ravi Dasan, the sorcerer, gripped him so much. Sometimes he must be a magician who came to the palace to see Nandini. What is the real relationship between him and Nandini? Who is looking for him in this place, at this time? What is he looking for? Knowing all this, maybe Nandini will come to know if she is really cheating on him? Ravi Dasan made sure in his mind that if only he got stuck with him, he would not let him know the truth. The man approached the man who pretended to be asleep. Again Ravi Dasa. Ravi Dasa. He called out. Aha! This voice? Isn't it like the voice of God who once danced in the Kadampur mansion? Can we hold him by the neck and force him to tell the truth? Don't you? A little more responsible. Isn't the important thing to catch the magician Ravi Dasan through him? Sorcerer! Did you fall asleep before sunset? Or are you dead and lost? The man who kept saying that, touched the body of the Pavatere and turned him over so that his face could be seen. Then, in that drowsy time of evening and dawn, in the dim light, Devarala, yes, it was him, saw the face of Pavuvatarayar. He wiped his eyes well and stared once more. Oh! Oh oh! He screamed ah! Ah! and ran away from that place. Before Palyavatarayar could open his eyes and sit up straight, he had crossed the altar open hall in front of the temple by two eights and started walking briskly on the Neem Bridge. Without even a moment to look back, he ran and leaped over the tree and reached the shore. The next moment he disappeared into the thick forest of bushes and trees. The scavenger watched in wide-eyed amazement as he sprang away. When he disappeared in the forest, the doubt gripped him that he had left him without catching him when the time came. Immediately, he also jumped up and ran. He could not jump over the wooden bridge as fast as Dave Rallan. He had to stumble and stumble and hold on to the branches. On reaching a carré, a single track was found leading into the forest area. He stared at it. It was clear that there were fresh footprints in the mud. Deciding that was the way Dave Rala must have gone, he quickly walked up. Although it was early morning, the sky was still covered with clouds and it was pretty dark. Some noises were heard in the forest area. Innumerable forest-dwelling creatures, battered by the storm and the rains, wandered around shouting their relief at the cessation of rain. The single track has gone a short distance and stopped. But Palyavatarayar didn't want to stop there. Even if he had to wander through the forest that night, he decided to catch the deity and Ravi Dasan, the magician he was looking for, so he entered a place hidden in the jungle. After wandering in the forest for some time, he saw a light in the distance. As the light was fading away from where it stood, it was evident that it must be the light of a lantern carried by someone to find the way. Aiming at that light, he walked very quickly. He was getting closer to the light. Finally, 
the flickering light appeared to illuminate a dilapidated hall in the middle of the forest and quickly disappeared. Palyavetarayar immediately knew that the Mandapam was Prithivipati's school temple in Tirupuram Pyam. Approaching the school staff, he stood by a nearby wall and listened. Yes, his hopes were not in vain. I heard two people talking. Step by step who spoke in a loud voice could be heard clearly. Sorcerer. Do you know how long I've been looking for you? I'm afraid you've either disappeared, or that Yama has taken you with you. Said Devaralan. The magician Ravi Dasan smiled triumphantly. Why is Yama coming to me? Yama is approaching Sundara Chola and his two children. Their lives will end tomorrow. Said the magician. At that moment a lightning flashed, illuminating the sky and the earth.